Hi, welcome to another IGCSE physics video. This is section 1.9 part 3 which is about law of conservation of momentum. This video will be looking deeper into the law of conservation of momentum. If you haven't learned about the law of conservation of momentum yet, visit the previous video which is part 2 of section 1.9 in which I talk about the law of conservation of momentum. In this video we will learn about inelastic collisions and we will also learn about some deeper applications of the law of conservation of momentum. Before I begin with talking about inelastic collisions, let's do a recap of elastic collisions from the previous video. In the last video we saw that an example of an elastic collision is one in which you're playing on a pool table. Let's say that you have a cue ball which is in this green color and you have an eight ball which you pot using the cue ball. So let's say you strike this cue ball using your stick. Let's say that this cue ball has a momentum of one kilogram meters per second. Based on this definition, we know that if that ball hits that black ball, the momentum from that cue ball will be transferred to the black ball, which is in this case. So in this case, the momentum of the green ball or the cue ball will equal to zero, while the momentum of the black ball will equal to one kilogram meters per second. So in this step, the momentum from the cue ball will be transferred to the black ball. And then finally, in the last stage, the momentum of the cue ball will equal to zero completely, while the momentum of that black ball will equal one kilogram meters per second. So the momentum of that black ball would equal one kilogram meters per second. So we can form an equation based on the changes that have happened. So using the law of conservation of momentum, we know that the momentum in its initial state before the collision was equal to one kilogram meters per second, and it was still one kilogram meters per second after the collision had taken place as the momentum from the cue ball was transferred to the black ball during the collision state. So we can use the conservation of momentum formula to make an equation for this scenario. So we know that the momentum of the initial state would equal to the momentum of the final state. And we know that the momentum of the cue ball in the initial state was one kilogram meters per second. And the momentum of the black ball in the initial state was zero kilogram meters per second as the black ball was stationary. And that would equal the final momentum after the collision had taken place. So the momentum of the cue ball after the collision was zero kilogram meters per second. As when the ball hit the black ball, it came to a stop and the momentum had been transferred to the black ball. So the momentum of the cue ball was zero kilogram meters per second after the collision plus the final momentum that had been transferred to the black ball, which is one kilogram meters per second. So if we simplify this equation that we have formed, we get that one equals to one. And this shows that the momentum of the system has been conserved. We also know that this type of collision is an elastic collision because the balls did not stick together. While the collision was taking place, the first ball came to a stop while the kinetic energy was transferred to the second ball. So the kinetic energy was also conserved. Now let's look at a scenario of a collision which involves an inelastic collision. Let's say that you were two cars that are about to be involved in a collision. Let's say that car A was traveling in this direction, so it had a positive velocity of say 30 meters per second, and car B was traveling head on towards car A in the leftwards direction, so their bumpers would hit each other, and let's say it had a velocity of negative 20 meters per second, as the velocity was in this direction. So let's say that the rightwards velocity is positive and the leftwards velocity is a negative. In this case, let's assume that there's no air resistance, no friction or no external forces like gravity. And let's say that car A has a mass of 1000 kilograms and car B has a mass of 500 kilograms. So this car is more massive than this car and this car has a greater velocity than this car. What do you think will happen when they collide with each other? Well, from our intuition, we know that when the cars collide, there will be a lot of sound that will come out and they will stick together because that's what normally happens when two cars that are coming head on in opposite directions collide. So the sticking of the cars that happens after the collision is a characteristic of an inelastic collision. And because the cars had impacted, some of the kinetic energy would be lost that it, as it would be converted into sound and heat energy that would come from the deformation of the object and the friction that would occur at this point. So another characteristic of inelastic collisions is that the kinetic energy would be lost to other types of energy. However, we know that from the law of conservation of momentum, the total momentum before the collision would always equal to the total momentum after the collision. So let's calculate the total momentum of the system before the collision using the data that were given for the cars. So the law of conservation of momentum says that the initial momentum of the system would equal to the final momentum of the system. So this means that the momentum of car A in its initial state plus the momentum of car B 
in its initial state would equal to the momentum of car A in its final state plus the momentum of car B in its final state. So using this formula, we can find the total momentum of the initial system, which should equal to the momentum of the final system. We know that the momentum of car A in its initial state is given by the product of its mass, which is 1000 kilograms, times its velocity, which is positive 30 meters per second, plus the momentum of car B in its initial state, given by its mass 500 kilograms, times its velocity negative 20 meters per second, as it's traveling in the opposite direction, which should equal to the momentum of car A in its final state, However, after the impact, we don't know what the final velocity of this combined system would be. As the cars have stuck together, the velocity would have been impacted as there's different velocities before the collision. But we do know that the total mass of the system would equal to the mass of car A plus the mass of car B, which is 500 kilograms. So the total mass would equal to 1000 plus 500 kilograms, giving us 1500 kilograms for the total mass of the system in its final state. So back to the formula, since we don't know what the velocity is, we know that since the two cars will be combined, they will have the same velocity. So there's no point putting a velocity final for car A or car B. So we can just label it as the final velocity of the total system. So the momentum of car B would be the mass of car B times the final velocity of the entire system after the collision. Now let's simplify the left side of the equation. So we know that the momentum of car A would be 30,000 kilograms meters per second plus the momentum of car B which would be negative 20 times 500 which is equal to negative 10,000 would equal to the momentum of car A plus the momentum of car B in its final state. Well here we only know the masses of the two cars so let's plug those in. So the mass of car A would be 1,000 kilograms times the final velocity of the entire system plus the mass of car B, which is 500 kilograms, times the final velocity of the entire system. So now I can simplify this side of the equation, which would give us 20,000 kilograms meters per second equals to 1,000 times the final velocity of car A, plus the 500 kilograms times the final velocity of the system. Here I can see that I have like terms of V final and V final here, which are coefficients of 500 and 1,000. So here I can factor out the final velocity of the entire system, and that would give us 1,000 for the mass of the first car plus the mass of 500 kilograms for the mass of the second car. And if we simplify this equation, we get 20,000 equals to 1500 times the final velocity of this system. Finally, we can divide each side of this equation by 1500, find the final velocity of this combined system that we have after the collision. So if we do that, we get that the final velocity is equal to positive 13.3 meters per second. And so this final velocity looks reasonable. In the state before the collision, car A had a lot more momentum than car B. Car A had a momentum of 30,000, while car B had a momentum of 10,000 in this direction. And so if you cross that out, you get 20,000 kilograms meters per second in this direction from the initial state. And therefore, the final state should also give 20,000 kilograms meters per second for the total momentum in the system. So let's verify if the total momentum is equal to 20,000 here as well. Well, here we know that the total momentum is 20,000 kilograms meters per second. And that should equal to 20,000 kilograms meters per second over here as well. Well, we know that the total mass of this system here was... 1500 kilograms and that would multiply to the velocity of 13.3 meters per second and if we calculate this we do get 20,000 kilograms meters per second and so the total momentum is conserved as we get 20,000 kilograms meters per second in the initial state and in the final state after the collision has taken place so here we have a word problem which says that there was a 50 kilogram boy so we know that the boy has a mass of 50 kilograms was running towards a shopping cart and jumped on it to form a combined system so we know that this is an inelastic collision because the boy jumped on the shopping cart and stayed stuck on it to form a combined system. And it tells us that the boy's initial velocity as the boy was running towards the shopping cart was positive six meters per second. The shopping cart is stationary initially. So we know that the shopping cart had no momentum as it had no velocity. However, after the collision, the total velocity is 2.5 meters per second. And we know that this is the total velocity of the combined system as the boy jumped on the shopping cart to increase the total mass. And finally, the question asks us, what was the mass of the shopping cart? So in this problem, we have to apply the concept of inelastic 
collisions, and the law of conservation of momentum. We know that the initial momentum of the combined system would equal to the final momentum of the combined system. And we know that the expanded formula in this situation would say that the total momentum of the initial system of object A, which would be the buoy, so we know that the mass of the buoy is 50 kilograms, and we know that the buoy's velocity initially was 6 meters per second. And then we add the momentum of the shopping cart in its initial state. However, we know that the shopping cart is stationary initially, and we don't know what the mass of the shopping cart is. However, since it's stationary, we know that the momentum would still be zero. And then we know that the mass of the buoy initially was 50 kilograms, even after the collision had taken place. And we know that the final velocity of the combined system after the buoy had jumped on the shopping cart was 2.5 meters per second. And then the mass of the second object, we still don't know, so we leave that empty. Times the velocity, the combined velocity of the system after the collision, which was 2.5 meters per second. So now we have to calculate what the mass of the shopping cart was initially. Now let's simplify this equation. So 50 times six for the Momentum of the first object in its initial state is 300 kilograms meters per second. And this is zero, so we just leave that. Equals to 50 times 2.5, which is 125 kilograms meters per second, which is the momentum of the buoy after the collision had taken place in the combined system. Plus that 2.5 meters per second times the mass of the shopping cart, which we will figure out. I can see that I can subtract 125 from each side of the equation, which would get us 175 kilograms meters per second which would equal to the velocity of the shopping cart times the mass of the shopping cart. And now I can divide each side of the equation by 2.5, which would give us that, that the mass of the shopping cart initially was 70 kilograms. Now let's check if the momentum of the entire system was conserved. Well, we know before the collision took place, the momentum of the buoy was 300 kilograms meters per second. And then we added that to the momentum of the shopping cart, which was zero. So the initial total momentum was still 300 kilograms meters per second. And then in the final state, we found out that the mass of the shopping cart was 70 kilograms. And then we added that to the mass of the 50 kilogram boy, which jumped on the shopping cart. And the total velocity of the combined system turned out to be 2.5 meters per second. So we can multiply 2.5 with the combined mass, which was 70 plus 50. 2.5 times 120, which equals to 300 kilograms meters per second. And so indeed, the momentum of the entire system has been conserved. And this is it for all of section 1.9. I hope your knowledge of the law of conservation of momentum and how you can apply it to real life applications is enhanced. And leave a like if you found this video helpful and leave a comment in the comment section and provide feedback so I can improve my videos in the future. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.